Hello, welcome to an awesome, awesome review. And today we're looking at the Power Rangers Legacy Buildazord Zeo Megazord. This, of course, being put together when you buy the five core Rangers, Zeo Rangers. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it. He does stand just at about seven and three quarter inches tall. So he has a pretty decent size. I think he is actually bigger than the Astro Megazord and the regular Megazord, though I don't have the Ninja one to kind of compare, which is my only regret in this entire collecting of these Power Ranger figures is I never bought red or yellow when I had the chance and red shot up in price so much that's probably never going to happen. Aside from those, I am missing some of the movie ones, but I don't care that much about it. But yeah, this guy is pretty cool. Uh, Detail-wise, it's not bad at all. There's a lot of minute details. There's a lot of little line work going like across the leg right here, all the way around the side, some paneling stuff going here. Same thing on this leg, you know, the Sphinx head is pretty nicely detailed, as is the little bull kind of uh, piece right here. The arm or shoulder things have like all this line work going on. Even the back on the red whatever bird Megazord. They didn't have names, did they? They, they were just like Zero Megazord 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I think. And then I think they called Sphinx Sphinx sometimes, and that's about it. But I don't think they actually had real like Megazord names like Tyrannosaurus in them. Uh, that's that's just something I'm kind of remembering. But yeah, there is detail all throughout here, which you can't see too much because there's no uh, kind of like panel lining or anything, which I might, you know, do some customizing later, of course, on the head too, which let's get on to the paint. The paint could be better. Again, just like the Zeo Rangers and the Gold Ranger, we do get a lot of this molded gold plastic, which looks more like mustard. So that's a little disappointing. We do get a little bit of gold paint on the head here and on the bottom of the feet and on this top piece of the right foot. We should have some gold on the plastic right here on the head and stuff, but we don't have it. And, you know, the I think this should be gold and there should be some red eyes or something. And part of this chest piece should be blue. So paint wise, he is lacking some detail. But that's kind of how it is with all the Megazords. If you guys remember the Mighty Morphin one, um, the Saber 2 Tiger was missing a lot, a lot of paint, as was the Tyrannosaurus. Not Tyrannosaurus, the uh, Triceratops. Both of them were missing a good amount of paint. So it's typical of the line. Disappointing that it happens, but not much to complain with because, of course, like I've said in my other reviews, Bandai isn't going to be making these figures for Power Rangers anymore. So complaining about it isn't going to mean anything. I mean, it, it, it is disappointing, but there's, there's really no point. Uh, I will say they did paint silver on here, and I want to say this is plastic. So I don't understand why, you know, they didn't just use the same plastic they used here on here and then just paint this gold. I feel like that would have looked better. They would have matched up a little bit more because this, you can definitely tell, is painted. It looks nice. Don't get me wrong. It looks really good, but... Yeah, I would have been fine with this being molded plastic, though I think this is just one solid piece, which is probably why they painted it. This might actually be a separate piece, It, I would assume, because they're not going to paint all this blue. So a little bit strange, but, you know, whatever works for them. Uh, Articulation-wise, not bad, not the greatest in the world at all, but at the same time, it is a Megazord, so it moves kind of like how a Megazord would, though some added articulation would have been nice. Uh, Head-wise, if I can make it so you guys can see it a little bit better, he can look... Up just a little bit not really too much but it's a little noticeable you can look down that one's a lot more noticeable you can go left and right and he can pivot his head side to side which I don't understand why he's on the ball hinge or ball peg and the Rangers aren't they're on a hinge why why don't they have a ball peg I mean I, I would love that articulation on the Rangers I'm never gonna understand that <laughs> but yeah that's with all the Megazords they all have the better head articulation uh, arm wise they can rotate all the way around come out about that far and he does have single jointed elbows i wish there was a rotation at the elbow or upper bicep just so we can move them in and out but there isn't unfortunately and the wrists do swivel all the way around he does have a waist joint but it is limited due to the back of the red plastic kind of touching the bottom piece of uh, his waist here so limited in that kind of sucks but it's all right again for a megazord you can kick up about, if you want to do it straight, about that high. I mean, you can technically get him to go up a little bit more, but then it looks more broken than anything. He can go outwards that much, which isn't bad. The weight does kind of want to push it down, but you can see it is holding pretty decently. 
and he can move his knee in that much which is actually really good for you know the bulkiness of this figure that is really well done uh foot wise he can kind of move it up just a little bit but this does kind of get in the way he can move back a good amount and he can pivot a decent amount and kind of rotate it but not not too much again the plastic does get in the way so he does have the pivot which is good i think that's a pretty important piece to have and he looks good i mean you can definitely pose him and make him look amazing again no weapons with the megazords which sucks it would have been nice if you know the zeo ranger came with them but then i guess he wouldn't have gotten his staff i don't know i feel like they're too picky with with the figures like i, I get that you know they do make new molds for every series um basically you know all the mighty morphin figures their body molds are different than all the zeo ones but at the same time all the males share the same body all the females share the same body if it's only from their series but they still share it so it would still you know i, I don't know i feel like they're kind of pinching pin a little bit i don't know i don't know the politics of the action figure world but like i said it would be nice to get some extra stuff uh is he worth it probably i guess kind of i mean i think the figures are worth it so he's you know comes along with them you get him as a nice bonus uh i don't think there is a legacy version of him if i'm correct i don't think they ever made it this far and there is no mini plot announced for him just yet i'm hoping there will be but who knows anyways let's get on to some size comparisons and just wrap this video up so just for a basic size reference here he is next to the zeo red ranger you can see he is a good size taller which is good again for a build figure I'd expect it and I'd want it to be a good size taller than the figure that came packaged with its pieces. Here he is next to a 144 scale Gundam RX-78 and you can see it is a very good size bigger though he is one of the smaller Gundams so would it be in scale? I, I don't really know. I'm not really sure. I want to say it is probably 144 scale. Maybe. Maybe. But you know it, it'll work. Again. A lot of these Gundams, like the older ones, are smaller. There's definitely ones way bigger, way taller than him. So if you wanted to mix and match for whatever reason, I'm sure you could get away. Next up here he is compared to the Mighty Morphin Megazord Mini Plot thing. And it, it's a cool little model kit. I actually really like this thing. It does look a lot more bulky than kind of these Buildazords and stuff. But the articulation on them is so good. My only complaint is that the details, especially if you don't paint it, kind of suck. This guy's kind of in a midway. He does need to be repainted and some parts of him definitely need to be touched up but uh overall I, I really like these this is awesome they both have their benefits and ultimately i think this is actually cheaper than this considering how many figures you have to buy can compare to the price on this thing and this thing does come apart so yeah hopefully we get one of him as a mini plus sometime soon like i said there has been some new ones announced Hoping to get those out and uh, yeah. And lastly here he is compared to the Astro Megazord and the original Megazord. And you can see he is just, I want to say, may, you maybe you can't tell from this angle, but from my angle he is definitely just taller than him by the top of these little fin things on his head. And maybe even by his head though, his head I think matches up with the top of the Megazord's fin thing. Ultimately, they all do look pretty good together. As you can see, I did repaint mine. I did a video on that. And the paint definitely helps these things make, you know, make them look a lot better. Of course, my paint job isn't the best. It's a little sloppy. I'm not as steady of a hand, you know, as I would like to be. But it definitely adds to it, especially on the feet here and the arms having these things painted. And just, yeah, it, it looks so much better that I might try and do it on this one. Hopefully, it comes out better. Don't know about the gold. This guy, I'm not saying it's perfect, he is definitely lacking in some paint, but he, he probably detail-wise is one of the nicer looking ones, especially the green right there. I don't know, I don't think I've noticed it that before, but it looks really good. Anyways, like I said, all of them together look awesome, not much else to say here, moving on. So ultimately, not a bad build figure, not great or amazing by any means, especially when you compare it to something, say Marvel Legends and Hasbro has put out. Uh, hopefully saying that you know I, I keep mentioning this and I'm probably going to make a separate video on the subject at some point soon you know I'm hoping Hasbro brings a lot more into the Power Ranger figures I hope they add some of the you know stuff they do with Marvel Legends into this series because you know imagine 
having a Buildazord Megazord with full articulation, not just, you know, the knees and the, you know, ankle pivot, but full on, you know, swivel at the, at the bicep, you know, maybe some ab crunch if they could somehow incorporate it or something going on there. It would be so amazing. Same thing with the Rangers. I'm hoping they go more for a traditional look than the whole kind of superhero buffed up look that we've been getting. I am hopeful for their Power Ranger line, but I am skeptical that they might just stick to, you know, the five inch figures because they do still put out five inch figures for Marvel. So who knows what will happen? Like I said, I might do a video on that. Probably if I do, it will be up on the weekend at some point. But this guy, is he worth it? Again, I think, yeah, it's not bad at all. If you're getting all five of the Rangers, you're getting him as a bonus anyway, though I can see a lot of people maybe just only wind picking up a Red Zio just because of Jason David Frank or maybe one of the other figures because it's their favorite Power Ranger actor, though I feel like most people will want to try and complete the set. So yeah, not much else to say here. Um, pretty good. Paint could be better. Articulation could always be better, but he is pretty much on par with the other ones, so I can't really complain too much. And uh, yeah, so with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, hit the like button, comment down below, subscribe for more, and I will see you all later. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.